Greetings, everyone. My name is Norea Hoft, Marketing Associate at Campbell & Company, and I would like to welcome you on behalf of our entire firm to Gearing Up for Giving Tuesday, one of many webinars in our free series for 2015-2016. Today is October 1st, and we are broadcasting live from our Chicago and Seattle offices. We hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you for joining us. Uh, before we begin today's presentation, I'd like to quickly go through some logistics for those of you who may be new to our webinars. Uh, first of all, we would like you to close any programs other than GoToWebinar that are running on your computer. Uh, make sure you call in using a telephone instead of using your computer speakers if you can. It's just a better sound quality. Um, move your cell phone away from your computer. That will avoid any potential feedback there. And if you experience any visual issues, you can send us a chat using that chat box in your GoToWebinar uh, control panel off to the right there. And you can also contact GoToWebinar at 1-800-263-6317. Finally, today's webinar will last 60 minutes and you'll earn one continuing education credit that is good uh, with your participation with CFRE International. About an hour after the webinar concludes, you will receive an email from GoToWebinar that includes information on how to download your CFR, CFRE certificates as well as a PDF of the presentation slides, a link to the webinar recording, and information on how to register for any of our upcoming webinars. Uh, we do welcome questions throughout the webinar today. Again, please use that chat box in the GoToWebinar control panel and direct your questions to Rebecca Geschwend. Uh, we will also have the end of the webinar for Q&A. All right, so logistics aside, I'd like to turn it over to your host today, Caitlin Murdoch, Associate Consultant here at Campbell & Company, and Marley Honkoop, who manages and leads All Give, Illinois' statewide Giving Day. Welcome, Marley and Caitlin. Thanks, Nora. Thanks, Nora. We're looking so forward to talking to everyone today about Giving Tuesday. It's a really exciting topic and an awesome trend that's really taking over and internationally. Um, it's being held on December 1st this year, and we have a lot to talk about today. Um, Marley is, is doing um, Il Illinois Gives Big this year, and so she'll talk to you a little bit about that and what you can look for in your different cities and states around the country for local campaigns. Yeah, so one of the great things is that 92nd Street Y that started Giving Tuesday has really been investing in um, city and statewide campaigns this year. And so I lead All Give, which is the Illinois Statewide Giving Day. Um, so it's um, All Give for Giving Tuesday on December 1st in Illinois. Um, but there are several across the country. So if you want to go to the Giving Tuesday website to see if there's a local um, campaign going on in your area, do that because that raises awareness of giving and adds donors to everyone. Um, so I would definitely reference that and support um, that. But either way, um, the content we're going to go over today is going to be great for um, not only Giving Tuesday statewide campaigns, but any giving day because we know that um, there might be some going on um, throughout the year as well. We put together a toolkit for our nonprofit friends, clients, and colleagues, and this toolkit provides more detail and explanation than we'll be able to get to today in our one hour together. So um, on the right hand of your screen in GoToMeeting, you should be able to see handouts, and there will be two handouts there, the slides that we will be presenting today, as well as the version of our toolkit that you can use to reference throughout this webinar or after the webinar when you're looking to plan um, your Giving Tuesday with your staff. So I think a really great question to start with this morning is, um, have you participated in Giving Tuesday? Um, we'll see a, we should see a poll that's going to be popping up on um, your screens. And if you could just fill that out so we can get an idea of who the participants are um, today and what experience levels we have with Giving Tuesday. Just a couple of facts um, while you take this poll. Uh, Black Fog reported that Giving Tuesday in 2014 saw a 36% increase in online giving compared to 2013. And that's a really, really great um, increase. And um, they also saw that Black Blackboard um, processed more than $26.1 million in online donations during 2014. So it will be exciting here to see 
um, who of our participants um, participated in Giving Tuesday in the last couple of years and really contributed to these numbers. So 52 per, um, participants said they have participated in Giving Tuesday percent, and 48 percent have said no, they have not participated. So it's a pretty even, um, pretty even there. So we'll be able to really speak to more, more experienced Giving Tuesday um, participants and people who are just getting started. I think we'll be able to touch on a lot of great tips and learning for everyone involved today. All right, so we're going to go over dispelling some myths because I know that there can be some barriers to participating in Giving Tuesday and a lot of questions that you may either be skeptical about your staff or your board. So let's go over the first one, which I believe that um, I've heard from quite a few participants asking, you know, isn't the market oversaturated? And I don't know about you, um, but I got a lot of Giving Tuesday emails last year, um, and which I was thrilled to see. Um, just because I wanted to promote our statewide giving these, that was a really good thing. But I think for us that are in the sector who also got that, kind of got worried and said, okay, is this, are we going to burn out our donors? Is the market oversaturated? Um, and I am happy to report that um, only four out of ten people actually know about Giving Tuesday. And to me, that equals an opportunity. And I think that kind of shows through what Caitlin just touched on is that only about 50% um, of the folks on the call have participated in Giving Tuesday in Baltimore. Um, or their organization. So just know that um, there is a lot of folks out there that don't know about it and you can raise awareness and be able to gain new donors from this day. Um, I think another fear is that only big organizations are able to um, really gain and utilize Giving Tuesday um, or a Giving Day for their organization. But um, according to um, a report by Blackbot, um, the actual size and gift in the average gift size is $34 between a large organization and a small organization. A large organization being, you know, over $10 million and a small organization being under $1 million. So I think that's something important to pay attention to um, and just know that, of course, you know, a bigger organization is going to have um, a wider reach, but just know that that gift size um, doesn't change really that much. Um, next, I think that another fear that I have heard from a lot of, um, you know, the folks in the social sector is that they're afraid that it's going to cannibalize year-end donations. Um, and I am happy to let you know that <laughs> the majority of the reports, I believe it's been five reports that have been done on by the five major platforms, um, report that participants who um, do Giving Tuesday see a 20% boost in their year-end donations. Um, so I just encourage you to not be afraid to jump in um, and to not leave that extra 20% on the table. Um, and from what I've heard, um, a lot of donors and supporters see it as two different events. They see Giving Tuesday as an online event and a lot of times as an annual gift as, um, you know, a separate thing that's happening at the end of the year. So, but we'll talk a little bit more about how you can use um, Giving Tuesday to either be a kickoff to your year-end campaign or a separate um, event all in and of itself. So, I think the last um, point that I want to touch on, the last myth, is going to be Giving Tuesday is going to burn out. Um, and I personally, um, from what I have seen, um, I don't believe Giving Tuesday is going to burn out for three reasons. Um, the first is that I think that it's a giving movement. The reason that I think that's different from a giving day and that it makes it a giving movement is that a lot of giving days are attached to a particular platform. And I think that's not only um, foundations and major donors leery to give because they don't want one particular um, company to be benefiting. Um, but I think it also makes your um, your average donor also leery. But because Giving Tuesday is what we like to call an open source campaign, anyone can participate in any way they like. Um, and so I think that's why it's really caught fire um, throughout um, the past four years. Um, our next one that we're going to touch on is that um, Giving Tuesday has um, been shown to double, um, has grown double digit year over year. So I think that that also speaks to it, um, that this has been a growing movement and a growing campaign um, consistently. And lastly, it's not just something that's happening here in the States. This is a worldwide campaign, and if it's something that goes worldwide, I think it's um, a day that's really going to find its own spot and stay on the calendar. So 
So it's easy to get swept up in the excitement of Giving Tuesday, but in order to utilize and build off the momentum from this Giving Day, we need to make sure that we're outlining goals and objectives for Giving Tuesday. Make sure that they're set clear objectives with your staff and with your leadership so that everyone's on the same page about your goals on Giving Tuesday. So we've split up the goals um, and objectives into four categories. I think it's a lot easier to talk about what you want to achieve on Giving Tuesday if you're able to talk about four distinct categories. So the first one is donors. If your goal is to increase the number of donors that gave last year if you participated in Giving Tuesday, or if you're just looking to gain more donors overall across the board, um, you want to reach out to new constituencies. And how you do this? You ask supporters to share posts or tweets with friends and ask others to join the cause. So you want to make sure that your inner circle is reaching out to their networks so they're able to gain, have people come and join the movement and join your organization um, on Giving Tuesday. Engage social media followers with a clever hashtag and compelling content. If you want your supporters who are engaged with you on social media to share your content and share your videos and pictures, you want it to be engaging um, so that they're willing to put the word out there and really get their friends and networks engaged. If you're looking to raise money, which if we're a lot of fundraisers on the phone, I'm sure that the majority of you are looking to raise money, um, we want to make sure we have an aggressive but attainable dollar goal around a specific project. It's really important to set a specific Giving Tuesday project so that you're able to show the progress from the beginning of Giving Tuesday to the end. So if you're able to show this progress, let's say, for example, in the beginning of the morning, at lunchtime, in the afternoon, in the evening, people will, who might have donated in the morning will be like, wow, we're almost there. We can really contribute to this uh, project and have it be successful. They might give two or three more times during the day. Um, Marley had a good example we were talking about uh, a couple days ago about a donor who had a matching gift. And they had reached the match, so she upped the match again, and then she upped it another mm -hmm. time. So it really can happen that if you're able to show progress with, with your constituencies, they're going to get really excited throughout the day. So in-kind donations is a different way to look at goals for Giving Tuesday. Uh, if this is a goal of yours, if you do an annual fund drive, for example, and you want Giving Tuesday to propel that fund drive, you want to provide a potential, potential donors the list of accepted items. And a tip for this would to be to make sure to send out this list in, in the weeks um, before Giving Tuesday so that people have a chance to collect the items, talk to their friends and family, and really get engaged and have those items to you all on Giving Tuesday so that you're able to show your progress and show how much you've collected on that day. Um, a good example of this is uh, Dress for Success, which is an international organization that developed Giving Shoes Day, which is very clever and has been very successful. They've done this for the past three years, and they've partnered with um, a celebrity shoe company, and they've uh, gathered thousands of shoes from across the world uh, for this Giving Shoes Day that's been really successful. So what you might think of as kind of not ordinary um, in Giving Tuesday, so maybe it's a different social media campaign, can be sometimes the most successful. So regardless of what your goal is, you're going to be raising awareness for your organization. But we've split this into a separate goal in case this is your number one priority for Giving Tuesday to really get your name out there and raise your profile. So if this is your goal, you want to create a unified, cohesive social media strategy. So you want to think about setting separate little goals for the number of shares, the number of retweets or mentions um, through your social media platforms, and make sure you're sharing compelling stories, which we'll talk a lot about later in the webinar, but just to start thinking about it now. Um, you want to direct people also back to your website where you have all information about your organization, your mission, your vision, your value proposition, so they really get to know your organization through Giving Tuesday. Yeah, and I think one good example of that um, is Badass Brooklyn Animal Rescue. Um, so they did raise money. So what Badass Brooklyn Animal Rescue does is that they are a no-kill shelter that is in um, New York. And so what they did for Giving Tuesday is they started kind of raising awareness. They were raising funds, but I think that the main goal was to be able to raise awareness and raise a profile with um, 
donors about what they're doing. And so what they did is they started early in the morning on Giving Tuesday and they drove down to some southern states to pick up, I think it was like six different dogs. Um, and throughout the day, they were tweeting pictures of themselves driving down, talking about what they were doing. Um, and so people started, you know, okay, started to follow their story and started to share it with their friends. Then they got the animals. Um, and the fun thing about what they do is that um, whenever they get a dog or a cat, they name it um, at, from like a movie star or a celebrity. So they might get an animal that's really stocky and big, like a big dog and name Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like that. Um, and so then they picked up the dogs, and as they were driving back up, they named all of them, and then they started, they were also raising funds for the dogs to be able to pay for their vet bills, pay for their care, um, and then they brought them back up to New York, and so people followed that story all throughout the day and shared it, and then they were able to do really good follow-up because they were able to share, you know, as each of the animals was given a home. So I think that's just a really unique way of being able to share and like raise awareness, a good story of that, just to get your creative juices flowing this morning. <laughs> that's important. So let's talk about a little bit define your day of metrics. So step two, after you pick out your goal, you're going to want to define what those metrics are and targets. So we're going to go over um, a little bit. I know most of you on the call probably heard of SMART goals, um, but I just want to take them and make them customizable for um, a Giving Tuesday campaign. So when you're being specific about your goals, make sure that that specific metric helps you tell your story. Um, I think there's been a lot of um, big buzzwords, you know, been storytelling, mar storytelling marketing. And so um, just make sure that that goal is specific and it helps you um, share about your organization and what you're doing. Um, I would also pick a measurable goal um, and try and pick one that you can use throughout the day. Um, and I don't, I don't think we mentioned this before, but 17% um, of donations last year on Giving Tuesday came from a mobile device. And when we say a mobile device, that means an iPad or a tablet or a cell phone. So I think that um, they're also going to be following your campaign on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. And so being able to pick that metric that you can share throughout the day, I think, is going to be really important and key for the success of your organization. Um, and then I would pick something that's, you know, audacious and yet attainable. So you want something um, that um, is exciting for the day um, and that your supporters and staff want to get involved and will get them excited. So inspiring yet doable um, and that you kind of need your participants to reach it and you can't do without them. That's what engages them. That's what gets them to give. Um, also, doing a relevant um, goal, and I think that I look at this from the cult, um, in the context of making sure that it's culturally relevant. So we're going to talk a little bit later about a story um, that really uh, spells that out and what that can look like. So, but just thinking about it as a goal that's culturally relevant um, and making Giving Tuesday make sense for your constituents and your supporters. And time bound. So this is a little bit what we talked about earlier. Um, so Giving Tuesday is one day. So that's kind of e that's easy for you to pick out. You know, it's 24 hours. But we've also seen a lot of successful campaigns that look at Giving Tuesday as the kickoff for their annual campaign. So you can do either. You can do it as a 24-hour push, or you can connect it to your annual campaign somehow, your annual fund. It could be something as simple as, you know, we want to raise 50% of our annual fund goal on this day. So just to get you thinking um, of how your SMART goals will really be able to connect to um, your campaign. So I want to be able to go over some examples um, that we can look at different buckets and metrics. So this is all going to be in the giving guide um, that's in the materials section. I highly suggest that you look through that entire book and reference it. Uh, it's got really good material. Campbell Company has done a wonderful job um, in what they've done there. So I just want to touch on a couple um, that are in here that I think are some uh, important notes to highlight as you're thinking through your metrics. So um, earlier, Caitlin had mentioned um, matches. So I want to just talk a little bit about why fund the three main reasons why funders or major donors participate in Giving Tuesday. So funders join, one re the first reason is um, it assists in building support and particularly younger and digital givers. So this is a way for them to build longevity into your organization's sustainability. Um, we know that a lot of funders are a huge proponent of 
um, sustainability and is also something that um, in the social sector we've been shifting to focus on. Second, they get to collaborate with other funders and increase overall giving um, in, their, in their community. And lastly, they get to use their big voice in a community dialogue about philanthropy. And they're the leaders in philanthropy, so getting to give, show, match support, and then inspire um, conversation about it is another reason why. So, and then for social media metrics, um, just something I want to touch on. Remember that asking for a social share can be more difficult than asking for money. So, as you are building up to your Giving Tuesday campaign, which we'll go over on an editorial calendar later with you, but just getting your, um, if that is going to be your goal, is um, a social media or online ask to have them already your so your supporters already practicing doing that. Um, so, whether that's you post a picture of that kind of captures what your mission is all about, asking your current supporters to share that now. So if later you're going to be asking your donors to ask friends to give, they already have some kind of primed and used to giving um, and doing that for your organization. And then there are real, some really good participation metrics, but I want to tell a story to really highlight and outline um, just some creative ideas that I've seen. So the Family Dinner Project um, is an organization that um, their goal is to have families sit down together for family dinners. So, and the reason the reasons are why there's been lots of studies that show you know how it benefits the family and children and teenagers of being able to sit down at least once a week. So, what the Family Dinner Project decided was, okay, you know, maybe we're not going to raise money. Maybe we're going to use this in a different way to um, achieve our mission. So, what they did is they asked. Um, families to sit down on Thanksgiving and pick out um, what they're um, pick out what they're passionate about giving to the causes they care about and then pick out an organization that they were going to give to on Giving Tuesday and I think that when people see that you're making efforts to achieve your mission regardless of how much money you're making off of it they can't help but give people know when they see something good and they just can't help but want to get involved so that was one really cool story that um, we had heard over there that um, has to do with the participation metric. Um, and so I just want to be able to say um, steps one and two, I really encourage you to sit down with your team, think through what your big goals are going to be, and then pick out the metrics that you're going to use um, to measure them. So sit down, I think that's step one. I know we say one and two, but I would sit down and look at them together and then present it to your team and think through, okay, what really makes sense for your organization. Once you set those goals, you want to make sure that you identify the audience that you are going to be reaching out to. So based on your goal, that will influence what audience you're going to be targeting on Giving Tuesday. So I've listed out four groups here of target audiences that are all going to require different touches. So they're all going to require a different type of social media presence or email and that type of thing. So we're going to go through each one and we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to touch each of those target audiences. So for the first group here, we have existing supporters who are already engaged in your organization's social media channels. So this is the low-hanging fruit. These are the people that are going to be the easiest to engage on Giving Tuesday. So you want to keep them engaged and excited through, a, through frequent social media communications, compelling storytelling, and personalized messaging. You want to make sure that they are sending out shares and tweets to their networks of people so that you're able to have a wide range of constituents that participate in your Giving Tuesday. And you want to make sure that you're telling this group in advance of your Giving Tuesday plans. They're likely the people who are closest to your organization, so they're going to want to get very excited in the weeks and months that um, are coming before Giving Tuesday and what your organization is doing, what the specific project is, what your goals are. And you might have some volunteers that come from this communication and say, I really want to become more involved. And maybe that's a young board, maybe that's a young staff member, maybe that's a volunteer that really has the time and energy to dedicate to Giving Tuesday. So make sure to touch these, this target audience in advance. The next group contains potential supporters that are connected to this first group, these um, existing supporters, but they are likely not very involved with your organization and don't know much about you. So your correspondence with this group, if this is your target audience, needs to be simple and direct. 
You want to provide content with background information on your organization. What's your mission? What's your vision? What are your plans? And what's your value proposition? It's really important to articulate that in short sentences and short videos and clips so that people watch something or read something and immediately know something about your organization. The third group is existing supporters who are not engaged in your organization's social media channels. So there could be different demographics. For example, you might have an older demographic that isn't participating in your social media channels, but you still want to engage them with your plans and let them know what you're doing for Giving Tuesday. So you want to send out an email and possibly snail mail. It's not preferred, but sometimes very necessary to engage this group. Make sure to explain clearly in this correspondence what Giving Tuesday is. If they're not engaged in social media and really know nothing about Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, then they're likely not to know what Giving Tuesday is. So you want to make sure you have links to the Giving Tuesday website and you know success stories and that type of thing so that they really understand what Giving Tuesday is and why it's important to participate um, as your organization. So you want to make sure that you are uh, encouraging people to join your social media platforms uh, in these emails as well. So have links to your Facebook and your Twitter and your Instagram so that maybe they are on social media but don't follow you. You want to make sure it's easy for them to do that um, by just clicking a simple button within an email. So this last group is going to be the hardest to reach, but if your goal is to um, gain awareness, uh, through Giving Tuesday, then you're going to want to reach out to potential new supporters that have little or no connection to your organization's existing supporters. So you might have to think really outside the box and brainstorm with your team on how to reach this group. So, some um, examples are to go to press outlets or engage community partners, partner with local businesses. Um, our Small Business Saturday happens um, as well, and so you might want to use that to partner with small businesses to encourage them to reach out to their patrons about your Giving Tuesday. And that, that might be helpful as well. And I think for those businesses, it definitely benefits them mm -hmm. to make their organization good. So it's not just um, that company helping you, you're also helping them and providing them with potential new customers, um, as well as a creative way to reach out to people that they might not necessarily had a connection to before. Exactly. So assessing your resources. So all of this is a lot of work. And I would just, um, again, for step three, I would sit down and once you've chosen those goals and metrics, sit down with your um, team members that are going to be helping you um, and kind of block out who you're going to be reaching out to. Just make yourself a little matrix and put some ideas in there. And um, all of that can be found in the giving guide as well. So we're going to go over assessing your resources. Um, and so this is, we have a list of um, human resources that you're going to need and a list of tasks. This again is going to be in the giving guide, so um, we're just going to go over, I'm going to go over a couple of pieces of this um, and share some stories that might help you getting, get to get you thinking creatively. So with a big push like this, we already know that you're doing your annual fund. It's September, you're doing a lot of good work, and October and November, they're just full of um, opportunities for you to be able to build into your mission, and we know that you have lots of other projects going on. So it can be overwhelming to think of doing um, a Giving Tuesday push. So one human, re I want to talk about two different ways that um, people found human, human resources. So the first one is going to be um, Aspire. So Aspire is um, a co an organization that's based here in Chicago. Um, and so they um, provide services to people that have special needs. Um, and so Aspire had two young employees um, that ran their campaign. And so they went up to their um, CEO and said, hey, we really think that we should get, do Giving Tuesday. Um, we have some good ideas for it. Can we do it? Um, the CEO brought to the board and the board said, okay, let's give it a go. Let's see what they can come up with. And um, they were able to run their campaign, which gave, um, which ended up raising $61,000, which blew um, what they were planning to do way out of the water. And so I think what's important for this is that um, the senior staff didn't have to take much part in it, 
Um, they probably acted as advisors in the situation, but really it was driven by these two young employees. And I got the opportunity to talk to them after they had ran their campaign and they said, hey, this was the first time that I really felt engaged in the work that we were doing at Aspire, that I felt like I was making a difference, and I got a whole bunch of professional development that I can now put on my resume and say that I've done. So I think it not only benefits um, a lot of the senior staff, um, but also the younger, um, the younger junior staff. Um, another option I want to talk about for human resources is tapping into your board. Giving days are like a big party, um, and so I think that is a lot of people that want to be able to get involved and participate. So I want to talk about LAF, which is um, the Legal Assistance Foundation, and what they do is they help provide legal services for those that can't afford it. Um, definitely not as flashy or enticing of a cause as our friends at Aspire. Um, and so with LAF, um, the senior board said to the junior board, you know, we want you to do a Giving Tuesday campaign, and they had a certain target goal um, of funds that they had to raise. But I think what was important is that the junior board wanted to not only reach out to an audience beyond who their regular donors were, um, and be able to communicate the mission of LAF to an average, maybe different kind of donor. And so what they got together and they decided to do was create um, a virtual gala. So the virtual gala was instead of having all of their friends and supporters come out for um, a dinner and a nice night, they said, stay at home and what we want you to do is any money that you would have spent on um, coming out to a gala and just donate it to LAF. And then what we want you to do is share why you're giving and then what you're actually doing. So it was a great way for folks to be able to share about the organization and then also get to have fun and um, be able to be interacted with by the staff. And so um, their results were also immense. They raised $41,000 for the agency um, and raised funds from 180 donors, um, which met their goal of more than 125 donors on Giving Tuesday. So just some exciting things for you to think about. Um, and they were also sending out tweets and pictures mm -hmm. of them sitting on the couch with their dog and, and that type popcorn of popcorn and all of that. So, so it made it very engaging and really raised their awareness. Yeah. If we go back to these tasks for a second, um, one of the most important things is to make sure that your digital platforms are ready because online giving um, increased 64% from 2013 to 2014, and mobile giving increased 101%. So it's essential that you take out your, you know, your devices and look at them and just test it out. See, you know, if you go to your website on your phone or your tablet, is it really easy to give? Because you know, social media and people who engage in social media are, are moving at a really quick pace. So if there's something that stands in their way, like Marley said, you really want to remove those barriers because those percentages are likely to just in keep increasing as Giving Tuesday keeps um, getting larger. Yeah, and so I think that um, Giving Tuesday is a great opportunity if you haven't done it yet to take the time to do it and have a good excuse to sit down and take the time because it's hard to design a user experience, but it's definitely going to be worth it in the long run. So, Make sure that you sit down and determine your needs with your team. So what current staff members can take on extra roles for Giving Tuesday? I know that that's, a lot of us don't have extra time to um, run the Giving Tuesday uh, day, but it's something that really um, takes time and hours and dedication. So if it can be split among you know, a couple staff members or engaged volunteers or young boards, like, like Marley said, then it really makes the, the work a lot easier. So thinking about how to create this effective, compelling, and shareable content. Uh, this is one of the biggest keys to Giving Tuesday is once you have people who are engaged in your social media platforms, how do you get them really excited about what you're doing? So how do you stand out among millions of organizations that also have important stories? So there's going to be lots of, of organizations that are kind of fighting for this um, to build their profile on Giving Tuesday. So you want to make sure you're developing a unique message that captivates your audience. These messages can be harnessed through visual storytelling, which includes images, videos, photographs, and infographics. We really can't stress enough that these visual aids 
are really key to engaging people on social media. If you're just sending out tweets with, with words and, and Facebook posts with just paragraphs, people aren't going to, to read through that. So you want to make sure you have unique hashtags, videos, pictures, um, and you're getting other people to share your stories. That's really, really key to being successful on Giving Tuesday. So we have some examples of how to think about uh, developing your content for Giving Tuesday. Um, when developing content, you want to think about your target audience. So who are you going to communicate with or who are you trying to communicate with the most on Giving Tuesday? Because that's really essential to understanding what you want your messages to be. So if you're uh, communicating with new donors or potentially new donors, you want to communicate the foundation and background of your organization. So again, I know I've said it before, but what's your mission? What's your vision? What, is, what are the projects that you um, are working on? Uh, illustrate the culture. What makes your organization's people and supporters special? And highlight the value of your organization. What is your mission? What do you, what do you believe in? and use raw, real content that provokes emotion. Some of these candid videos that we see on Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram are sometimes the most compelling, and they, uh, they evoke real raw emotion, and I think that's what we're looking for with Giving Tuesday. Maybe something that's not as staged, but more just, just raw. Maybe it's an event that you're doing, and you are just filming short clips with with different participants, and then you're posting it on Giving Tuesday. I think that's a really good way for people to see day to day what your organization does and um, how great your work is. You want to promote alumni, donor, member stories, different constituents. Uh, a, a good way to do this is to reach out to those people and ask them to share a personal story. So uh, Marley and I were talking with uh, some individuals about Giving Tuesday, and we had some people say, well, you know, we, we're a homeless shelter, and, you know, our constituents can't necessarily give back to us on these types of days. So how do we reach out to new constituencies? And, I, and one of the things that we said was, well, you can get those people to share a story. How did you impact their lives? How did you um, help them? get from where they were to where they are today. And that's one of the biggest gifts they can give you as you try to get your message out there is sharing sharing their special story um, through your social media outlets. Yeah, and so I think that really goes to, you know, what does a donor get out of giving? They, they're essentially buying a feeling. Mm -hmm. And so I think that this is the really fun part of the campaign, but also is your opportunity to communicate the value of what they're investing in. Um, so I think that never, never feel like you're not giving something. I think that sharing these stories is compelling, um, worth it, and definitely the fun part of the um, campaign planning. Absolutely, and they can get very excited about participating as well because they might not think that they're able to participate, mm -hmm. but if they're able to do something different, like share their own personal um, anecdotes, that is exciting for them as well. You want to express your special initiatives and your organization's needs. This is important to empower your purpose and showcase programs or initiatives that constituents' donations will support. So if you're doing that special project that we talked about earlier and you're trying to raise funds for that, make sure that you're clear on the initiative and how um, a donor's money from Giving Tuesday will really help that cause. Showcase your organization's success stories, which we kind of just touched on, but uh, what has your organization accomplished lately? How have previous donors propelled achievements? So I think that, that can be paired with featuring or with showcasing um, your success stories and featuring messages from your leadership. So maybe your leadership um, partners with a, a big donor who has really created a lot of change in your organization and really done a lot of good. Getting them to show how they're participating in Giving Tuesday could be really exciting and, and compelling. And a lot of times your president or your CEO or your board chair um, are the head of your organization. They're really the face of your organization. So getting them involved in something like Giving Tuesday, which might be a, a deviation from their normal day-to-day -day activities, can show a different side of them as well as a different side of the organization, which usually is never a bad thing. So when we talk about um, visual storytelling as kind of the most compelling way to tell your story and to explain what your organization does, 
it can be very powerful, especially on social media. So it's important to consider certain characteristics when you're developing this type of communication. The first is authenticity. Um, you want to create real and raw messaging, what makes your organization and what you do unique. So again, what is your value proposition and how is it authentic? A sensory stimulation, how can you bring content to life through visual and audio depictions? So how can you take these really short videos, these snapshots in time of what your organization does and make them show um, you know, what your organization stands for and how they're you know, changing the community day to day? And then how can you develop content that's unique and different from the past? So, we're all busy and a lot of times maybe this communication and messaging isn't number one on our list. Um, so we want to think about how we can kind of jazz up our normal day-to-day -day communication with our donors and supporters through Giving Tuesday. It's a really great way to freshen up the image, um, you know, think about different messaging because you're maybe reaching out to a different constituency, a younger constituency than you normally would um, through your mailings and email lists. So you want to think about jazzing up your, your messaging for Giving Tuesday, and then you can use that messaging for your annual appeal or even uh, through the next year. Um, really kind of kickstart a new message through Giving Tuesday. And then how is your organization's mission relevant to society or relevant to your constituents? So Marley's going to talk about the Chinese American Service League, um, who had a different type of constituency that they didn't really know if Giving Tuesday was going to be something that their constituents would be interested in, and it ended up being a great success. So she's going to give that example in a few moments, which I really think speaks to this uh, relevancy and keeping your communication relevant with your constituents and the broader community. Yeah, and also Donors Forum is going to be hosting a webinar that's specifically focused on how to make your um, campaign culturally relevant. So you can always sign up at the, on our website at www.donorsforum.org. Great. So I wish that we could just spend an entire time on the <laughs> webinar telling unique and fun stories um, that we've got to see over the past couple of years um, of successful campaigns to just be able to get you brainstorming about what your organization could possibly do. So the one of the ones I just really want to be able to share today was um, housing opportunities and maintenance for the elderly, um, also known as home. So if you can look at the picture here in the bottom middle picture, um, you can see the CEO. He's the tall, bald guy. And the reason that I point out that he's bald is because their Giving Tuesday campaign was based on raising enough money um, to where the CEO would wear a hideous toupee for a day. So um, Bruce ended up making a video um, saying that, you know, he had challenged his development team and said if they could raise, I think it was about $20,000 on Giving Tuesday, that he would wear this hideous toupee for a day. And so it worked. Um, I think a, a lot of people thought that it was fun. How often do you get to see a CEO kind of make a fool of themselves in a way um, and also see the fun side of the organization? Um, and then they were able to do great follow-ups, so they were able to follow the campaign and say, you know, we're $10,000 away from having Bruce wear a toupee, you know, all these different messages. And then when they actually did it, they were able to um, show a picture of Bruce wearing the hideous toupee throughout the day that he had to wear it and thank the donors. And the donors were able to engage and follow that story. So I think it's one that's just fun and you get to see um, an executive director do something that they normally wouldn't do. And I think that really speaks to the fun aspect um, of doing a Giving Tuesday campaign. Next, um, as we've talked about, um, Chinese American Service League, as Caitlin had mentioned earlier. So I really like and am inspired by what um, they did. Um, a short term for them is Castle. Um, and so what Castle did was um, they were like, okay, we really think that if we don't participate in Giving Tuesday, we're going to be leaving money and support on the table. So how do we jump in and make this culturally relevant? And so the team, the development team had thought through it and they're like, well, what if we made it more about um, Chinese New Year than we did make it about um, the All Give campaign, so the Giving Tuesday for Illinois. 
so what they did is they um, they went around to all the board don't um, all the board and said, hey, will you take a picture with these ram horns on your head? And so they were able to take pictures of each and every single one of the board members, and every day they would post a picture of one of their board members and say why that they were giving to the organization on Giving Tuesday. Um, they had lots of pictures of the CEO too holding signs like you know, give for this, give for that, but I think that this was the turning point in their campaign where they were able to really make it make sense um, for their donors and for their supporters. Unique way to uh, engage your board for sure. Mm -hmm. So your Giving Tuesday communication. So if you will reference um, your giving guide, there's a whole laundry list of um, the different ways that you can use social media platforms, but Caitlin's gonna touch on um, email specifically. Yeah, so if you're looking at your um, your toolkit, it's on pages 12 and 13. You'll see, um, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube. We've kind of laid it all out there for you. But I think uh, to talk about today how we utilize email, which is a little bit different than how we might think about uh, our using social media on Giving Tuesday. So we don't want to forget about our most common forms of communication uh, to our donors. Usually we're reaching out to our constituency through email and mail, um, and so we want to make sure that we don't lose this communication on Giving Tuesday because people will still want to be reminded of what you're doing. So email communication is, is key. So establish an email marketing plan. You want to communicate with your constituents, integrate updates, and calls to action in regular email. So this could be a sidebar to your, you know, your newsletters or your emails that you're sending out that really shows here's what we're doing for Giving Tuesday, here's the progress we've made, and here's how you can help. Um, and you want to make sure that you have have your links to your different platforms. You can also segment emails by constituency. So you might have younger donors who are on your email list who you want to reach out to them and, and invite them to become really involved and become ambassadors on Giving Tuesday. So you might have a different message that you're going to be sending those, those constituents as opposed to maybe older donors and uh, constituents that might not be as interested in, you know, sharing your videos on Facebook or uh, Twitter, so they might receive something different uh, and maybe less frequent. So the benefits of having email as part of this strategy for Giving Tuesday is it increases awareness and maximizes your footprint. So now you're touching on all of your social media platforms as well as your email outreach, and you're increasing, therefore, a number of volunteers, donors, staff and stakeholders who are all aware of Giving Tuesday now. For those people, like we talked about before, who don't know what Giving Tuesday is, you will have had a little blurb about it in your emails, and now they will have been aware of Giving Tuesday. And a lot of times, board members and volunteers like to see that you're thinking outside the box as an as a organization, and you're being innovative. And this is really a good way to, to do that um, through Giving Tuesday. And it also can move your supporters to social media platforms to your social media platforms that might not follow you or they might not be friends with you now. Uh, an email, giving them the information on how to do that is a good way to move them over to your social media platforms. Which is why it's so important in those email communications to make sure that you have those social share buttons. Yes. Can't stress enough. If you have not integrated those yet, I would definitely do so before December 1st and before you send out your email communications for Giving Tuesday. So I'm just going to go over a high-level editorial calendar um, with you because I know I've, I've always get a lot of questions about, okay, well, how do we plan our communications and prep our followers? Um, so a very detailed um, timeline is going to be in the toolkit on page 17. So feel free to look there, but like I said, I'm going to do more of a high level here for you so you can just start to think through what that's going to look like. So for September and October, what you're going to be doing right now is building a following and connecting to your donors at least once or twice a week, um, letting them know and priming them, you know, about the good work that you do, why people give to your organization, um, what impact you're making in the community, a little bit about your organization's personality, I think, and um, just start to be able to create those, you know, um, shareable content that is going to bring other supporters to your organization. Then, the first and second week in November, you want to start to educate your supporters on the concept of Giving Tuesday. 
you know, what is Giving Tuesday or what is my local campaign? Um, like I said, only four out of 10 know what it is. And so this is a great time for you to just raise awareness um, of a giving day to your um, constituents. So I would say um, in November, weeks three and four, share with your supporters that you are going to be participating and that these are your goals. Um, and just start to prime them with that. Say, hey, remember how we talked about Giving Tuesday? Um, we're actually going to be participating in that, and here's what our goals are for that day. And then on December 1st, you say, hey, we know that Giving Tuesday is going on. Give to us. Ask them to help you reach that goal. Um, and then, like as we said at the beginning, share out your progress throughout the day and really um, create excitement in your supporters and your staff and your board members um, as you're working towards reaching that goal. And then on December 2nd and beyond, say thank you. And um, Caitlin's going to go a little bit more in depth about what that looks like. So a lot of you on the phone are probably fundraisers. And I think one of the things that we talk about the most is stewardship. And so what do we do with these newly acquired? acquired donors and the newly acquired support. And we can't stress that stewardship is so important. We can't stress that enough. Um, so we want to make sure that we are reaching out to this newly acquired support and really pulling them into our fold and really engaging them in different ways and not just letting this be a one-time gift or a one-time engagement with Giving Tuesday, but something that they can feel compelled to support the organization um, for months and years to come. So in order to do this, the most, the simplest thing to do first is to post on social media thanking your donors and people who were involved with you on Giving Tuesday. Make sure you share about if you met your goal and what that was. Right, right. And you can also include, incorporate that in your personalized thank you notes. Um, so that might be a little bit different, difficult if you have, for example, a thousand new donors um, that engaged with you on on social media, we think about, although it wasn't part of the Giving Tuesday phenomenon, uh, it was its own phenomenon, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, and they had 600,000 people that wanted follow-up communication from their donation, and obviously it would be really, really hard to send that many personalized thank you notes. So just thinking about if you receive a huge influx of, of new donors, how are you going to make sure that you touch them and let them know that their support meant a lot to you? If you want to send up send follow up materials with information on other projects and programs, so let them know what you're doing um, in your organization and you know different events that they can come to and different ways that they can become engaged um, in your organization. And if there's a couple of people that really helped you throughout Giving Tuesday, maybe those are some people that you want to continue to have one on one meetings with because if they were really engaged in Giving Tuesday, they're likely to they've likely bought into your to your mission and really believe in your organization and might be able to to help you um, really with other volunteers and with other areas of your organization. You want to add these new people to your email and mailing list. Uh, you want to make sure that they're getting your regular emails and that your regular mailings um, and that they're continuing to be touched after Giving Tuesday and stewarded after Giving Tuesday. All right, well, that's all we have to share. We'd love to answer some questions and hear back from the audience. Great. Thank you so much, Caitlin and Marley. That was a lot of really great information packed into a short amount of time and we've had a ton of questions coming in so before I launch into those I want everyone to know if you've asked a question um, and we don't get to it today we will definitely follow up uh, via email and also if you think of a question um, after the webinar is over that you wish you would have asked always feel free to shoot us an email and we will reply uh, definitely so um, Here's a great question. Um, our donor base is significantly older, and we've heard feedback that they don't check their email or mobile devices that often. Have you seen any success with direct mail or old-fashioned phone campaigns to supplement uh, this kind of social media campaign? Yes, um, I have actually heard of two or three organizations that um, felt the same way about their um, donor base. And so what they did is about two weeks before, they did, just like you would do on Twitter, they just sent them a postcard saying, hey, we are. this is what um, Giving Tuesday is. We are um, 
we are going to be participating. And so if you send your check on this day, it should arrive on Giving Tuesday, and we'd love for you to participate and give. Great, thank you. Um, here's a question about uh, matching challenges on a giving day, um, how, how you balance a uh, matching challenge and uh, would it be better to push an initiative and can you give some examples of, of how someone might use a match? Yeah, about how someone might use a match. So it's going to be similar to, you know, make your dollar go farther when you're um, talking with, when you're communicating with your constituency. Say, hey, if you're, if you give on Giving Tuesday, that day, um, it's going to double your dollar, essentially. So the more that you give, the more we're going to be able to get that match. Um, Caitlin, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think that matching is a really great thing to do with these um, one-day campaigns because people get really excited. And individuals that might not be able to do a matching program and let's just say uh, a capital campaign, they might not have the means to um, do a type of match that an organization needs for a larger multi-year campaign might be able to do a smaller match, let's just say a thousand, um, five thousand dollars, which is a you know can make a big difference, but it is a smaller amount. They can do that type of match that is really can be geared towards Giving Tuesday and can be really helpful to the organization, but maybe not as large scale. Yeah, so it makes everyone feel like they're um, coming together to be able to impact the organization, but doing it in a more efficient way yeah. or adds more value. Great. Here's a, another great question from Donna. If we use Giving Tuesday as a kickoff, and I assume that's for their um, annual appeal, do you have any suggestions as to how to keep momentum up for the entire month of December, so after Giving Tuesday is over? Yeah, so I think that um, you want to make sure that you're maintaining uh, communication before Giving Tuesday, but maybe not uh, peppering them with, you know, a lot of emails about Giving Tuesday. Maybe it's one every every now and again so that you're able to sustain that communication up into till your annual um, appeal. And I also think it's important to uh, continue consistent uh, communication after Giving Tuesday, like we said before, saying how successful Giving Tuesday is and how that feeds into your annual appeal. And if you're doing, um, like Marley mentioned earlier, you're trying to raise, raise 50% on Giving Tuesday of your of your annual um, appeal goal, uh, you can say how far you are, and then you can continue that metric through your um, annual appeal. So you can be sending out. Um, communication saying we're this far to our annual appeal thanks to Giving Tuesday which raised this amount and you can really just keep the momentum building um, throughout that last month. Yeah and I think one other creative way that I've seen an organization um, be able to connect it to their annual campaign is saying hey um, we want other new donors to give to us on um, Giving Tuesday as part of our annual campaign. Will you ask your friends, your family to give on Giving Tuesday? Um, and share a little bit about our organization and then say, you know, if they share, you'll be able to also contribute to the capital campaign. Something along those lines is being able to draw some folks in, um, but also add to that annual campaign and has that annual campaign, campaign connection. Great, thanks so much for that. Um, here's a question from Kathy, and I know we've heard this a lot in our Seattle uh, region as well. Um, we have a single day of giving in our city that is highly successful, um, but it's not December 1st. How do we differentiate the content and approach uh, for Giving Tuesday? I think you can use some of the same content that you're going to use for that Giving Day um, if we're talking about, you know, Seattle or, or different cities. So you can reuse some of the messaging and communication that you have for that day, but maybe you pick a different project. So if you're thinking for that Giving to giving day locally, you're going to, for example, raise the percentage of, of alums that give to you um, on that specific day. Maybe you have a different goal from that day as opposed to your Giving Tuesday. Also, which, what makes you, um, Giving Tuesday unique is that you're using a unique hashtag when you're sending out your communication. So you're connecting with a lot of different um, people on social media by using a unique hashtag that might be different for, or is going to be different from the one that you use on the local giving day. So you, there's a number of ways to differentiate um, yourself from the two days. 
uh, mostly through content and through the goals that you set. Yeah, so so for an example that I can think of is maybe for that giving day, um, I know Seattle does do an amazing giving day. So maybe you focus on um, financial support for the Seattle specific giving day, but then um, for Giving Tuesday, because it's all about time, talent, treasure, testimony, you are able to um, ask for maybe in-kind donations, volunteer hours, um, social shares, anything like that. Um, I think that there's definitely two different ways you can play it. Excellent, thank you. Well, we've um, sadly come to the end of our scheduled time today. And again, I want to stress that if you didn't get your question answered or if you have more, please um, let us know. You can contact us at webinars at campbellcompany.com. You can also email uh, Marley or Caitlin directly. Um, just visit our website for more information on how to get a hold of them. Um, we'd like to thank you again for joining us today. Uh, we hope you'll also take a moment to fill out a very short survey about your experience that'll pop up on your screen as soon as the webinar ends. And we hope you'll also join us for other webinars in our free series uh, coming up on Wednesday, October 14th is Incentive Compensation in Healthcare Philanthropy. Uh, and we'll be joined by Susan L. from Barnes Jewish Hospital and even if you're not in the healthcare field, if you're curious about incentive compensation uh, in the field of fundraising, it's still a great webinar to join. Thank you so much, uh, Marley, for joining us today. Thank you to Caitlin and also everyone else who is working toward making Giving Tuesday and philanthropy uh, a part of our national movement in giving. I really appreciate everyone joining us today. We, this is a record number of webinar attendees and we're just so pleased. Thank you so much.